My name is Timothy Worcester, and we will begin our celebrations. I have the privilege of serving as provost here at Asbury University, and it is wonderful to welcome you to the almost finished dedication of the Henry and Elsie Bayless Arena. We are so grateful that you are here to participate with us during our ribbon cutting and the dedication of the newest building on Asbury's campus. We want to recognize that with us today are Asbury faculty and staff and students, supporters, local friends and volunteers. We have with us President Brown, who you will hear from in a few minutes. We're also privileged to have the chairman of the board, Larry Brown, and other board members with us today. And we want to warmly welcome prospective students. You may be the most important guests with us today because you have the opportunity in the future of making use of this facility when you come as students. As we move forward in our program, we want to thank many who have invested over the years in gifts of time and resources and prayers. One of those couples were Henry and Elsie Bayless. And I'm certain that for most of you, that name may not be familiar, but look around. Go ahead. You are in a special place. I am sure there's not another arena in Kentucky that was funded with the proceeds from the sale of an orange grove in Florida. Well, this is one of a kind, and this is one of those. The blessed couple, Henry and Elsie Bayless, were friends of the university, even though they were not alums. They loved the mission, they loved the students, and after their passing, they provided in their estate for funding for this facility to benefit Asbury students. The sale of that orange grove provided the lead funding to build the Henry and Elsie Bayless Arena that you're sitting in today. And we are privileged to name this arena in their honor. The equine program's focus on God, people, and horses is driven by a very important person here today whose name you likely do recognize, Harold Rainwater, a longtime faculty member, visionary for the program, and the engine behind its success. We're going to ask Harold to come up in a few minutes and speak about the impact of this arena and the program's vision. But before Harold comes, we have senior equine major, Elizabeth Beck, who will come and open us in prayer. And then we will also hear from our president. Thank you again for being here. Colossians 3, 23 through 24 says, whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart as for working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful day where we get to come together and gather for the dedication of this new arena. God, thank you for all of the volunteers, staff, students, and visitors who have been able to come and celebrate this expansion of the Equine Center with us. God, we thank you for the opportunity to grow Asbury and enhance the learning and education of the students who will walk through the doors. Thank you for placing generous don donors in our path to make this possible. God, we ask that you be with us today and help us to see that it is not only a celebration of an expansion, but also a time of gathering in your presence. We ask that you help this place to be a vessel of your love and blessings for the students who walk in this barn doors and feel your presence and beauty. God, we love you and we cannot thank you enough for the gifts and blessings that you have given us. In your name, amen. Good afternoon. Wow, what a crowd. God, people, and horses in one place. Today, we thank God for the opportunity we have to come here to dedicate the new Bayless Arena. We thank you to the board. We thank you to the president, the provost, the administration, the advancement team. Thank you to the students and parents who have believed in us. Thank you to you, the community, who are here today in support I asked two people um, to come be a part of this. Um, 
and you could have asked others, but Jeannie McDowell, uh, who you'll see in just a moment, um, was one of those that came along beside this program in the very beginning. Um, with everything from manure spreaders to horse trailers to office furniture, um, she bought the first thoroughbred makeover horse. Uh, she funded an endowed scholarship. And anytime this program gets in trouble, there's a couple people I call, and one of those is Jeannie. What do you need, Harold? Is kind of her answer. Uh, Jeannie traveled all the way from Ohio today to be here, and I thank you for that. Another person that uh, has been a part of my life, my family's life, even my parents' life, um, but particularly in this uh, campus for more decades than he'll probably want to admit, is Clay Corman. If there was any dirt to be moved, any fence rows to be moved, if there was arenas to be built, if there was rock to be ho-rammed, if there was anything that needed done, you call Clay and he'd take care of it. Clay, we thank you for your gift to Asbury from the Loose Center to the baseball fields to uh, Cecil's wife will told me when he was leaving, he said, stay close to Clay. So I'm still doing it, Clay. Blame Cecil. He's helped us in so many ways. Francis Asbury used a horse to reach people and go where he needed to minister. In 1790, he established Bethel Academy, the first of its kind school that's just two and a half miles from this location. He rode a horse by the name of Little Jane, and Little Jane went down to Handy's Bend, which is about two miles from here, and they established a school. And I believe that probably Little Jane rode right through this farm. A hundred years later, Asbury College University was established using that name. Today, we use horses in ministry and in service, also at Asbury. I've told this story before, but I have a new crowd. So uh, as you came into town, probably the only way you could get into town today was you came by a statue of a horse, Francis Asbury on a horse, about 230 to 50 years ago. He was on a mission leaving town with a Bible under his arm. If you came to this campus, you see students with a mission and a purpose to train, to work, to serve the challenged and the disadvantaged. So we're still doing ministry with a horse 250 years apart. And I believe those are literally the bookends of Asbury University. It's not as long as it looks. In this facility here, we hope to start a brand new program that we have not had. I uh, observed a piece of that today with these beautiful young ladies on the front row. I shared that video with your mom and dad in Florida. Um, to start a Western program, it is a big part of the lacking of completion of this program. Now, this is a substantially complete building. It means it has a top on it. It has some stalls. We still have a floor to put in. We still have to finish stalls. We have to put electric, plumbing, etc. But I am very sorry today that Jesse Westfall could not be here. He is the launcher of this concept and the one that has taken this to another level for us. Jesse's one of the probably top two or three trainers in the whole nation. And he has spent the last seven years working at Asbury and investing in our students. And today we got a glimpse of that program of which Liz will be the student leader in that. So one of those wings will be a new Western program that we hope to launch here. The other wing that we hope to uh, use down this side or that side um, is to add to our police mount program. You probably are wondering who these folks are over here, but I'm going to introduce them in just a second. But Asbury has a unique program. We train police mounts. Uh, I think it's the ultimate service animal, uh, a police mount. And we just don't train a horse to be training a horse. That's not the goal of Asbury. The goal of Asbury is to bring in students. But we found that 
bringing these horses for these students to train over a four-year period, then turn them over to departments was a way that we could measure our success. It's hard to manage if you can't measure it. So we know we can measure it today. We have 50 horses like you see over here across the United States. Most of those just in the last couple of years, 10 of those this year. Um, we have 26 horses in training right now that are already pre-sold at Asbury. And we have another 50 total. No, we have 50 more total that are in our training program. Two of those that are in our program that are our students, uh, the closest to me is a horse named Lucian, and he's trained by Emma Forsyth. And this horse will um, be going to Kent County um, maybe next week. So if any of you want to come and do counseling with Emma when she loses her horse next week that she's invested her life in, come see her. The horse next to her is Monty, and that's Madison Hare, and that horse will join two sisters in Indianapolis. I am so pleased today to introduce also um, a department that drove all the way from Louisville after having a program this morning and meeting with their chief and trying to validate their program, uh, which they can, there's no question. Uh, one of the departments that stood closest to Asbury. And when we started on this um, back in May, uh, one of the officers said, we want to be at your grand opening. Well, this is not really a grand opening, but it's as close as we're going to get today. Um, and I have Sergeant Brandon Savage, hold your hand there, uh, on justice, Officer Justin Hardy on law, and Officer Angela Ball on legend, and Officer Nick Leitz on Sonny. Justice, law, and legend started at Asbury as little baby horses. And now they're in service. This last derby, I may have the numbers not quite right, but I think seven of nine horses that were at the Kentucky Derby doing mounted patrol came from Asbury University. Another way that we are impacting the kingdom with horses and in service. I would like to ask you to join me in thanking the Louisville unit for the work they do and for coming to be a part of today's program. They have that nice rig out front that you'll want to stop and talk to them when this part of the program's over. And um, I hope they'll stay and have supper with us tonight. I have the privilege to introduce uh, Sarah Beck, the other part of the Beck and Beck team. It took me about a year to know them apart. They're not twins, but they like to mess with me. And uh, so um, these are a dad's delight, Sarah Beck. Harold previously asked me to share a short student testimony. I had this whole speech written about how I found Asbury, the process in getting here, and how God has been continually changing me through this experience of being an Asbury student, but also an equine student. But all, although this process is very important in how I've gotten here, I think it's also important to share a testimony of God's faithfulness these past four years, in not only my own life, but watching it here in this equine program. I'll share, though, that my sister Elizabeth and I only came to Asbury for two reasons. So, one, it was a Christian college. It was built on values and beliefs that we wholeheartedly can stand behind. And two, Jesse Westfall was the trainer. And if there was no equine program here, or even a hint of Western riding, I'll be honest in saying you probably would have never met Sarah or Elizabeth Beck here at Asbury. That is only one reason why all of us are so excited about this facility to be able to learn and to grow more in our horsemanship skills. 
there's an emphasis on stewardship here. And although sometimes it's tough to make decisions, I can trust that they're made with the students and horses' best interest in mind. Harold has a little mantra of sorts that you've already heard, saying, God, people, horses. And in many ways, this is clearly edified through the way that people interact here at the farm. Being a student co-leader of the Police Mount Club last year gave me a little bit more insight into how hard our faculty, staff, and others work for our benefit. And not even just here, but the faculty and staff on campus as well. Countless extra hours are spent talking to students, spending money on aiding students in their development, even out of their own pocket, and many prayers being lifted up for us, and even others who work to keep facilities clean and organized. Someone I thought about when often thinking about servant leadership here at the farm was Sarah Reeves. She passed away this last week, but she was one of the most faithful workers I have ever known. Sorry. What I've come to realize now is the way that Sarah worked so earnestly and faithfully, which is a small portion of what this equine program is. She spent countless hours cleaning bathrooms meticulously, helping David move horses around, and taking care of anything that needed to be organized or anything that any student needed. Oftentimes, she would do it without being asked, and not anyone would even know. We all took her for granted sometimes, but every morning she still showed up faithfully while eagerly moving towards her list of tasks in cleaning and caring for the horses and cats. A lot of work is done here at this facility from, st from faculty, staff, and students, and it's not done in front of others for just approval or praise. Even in their busy weeks, students are at the barn early every morning to take care of horses, clean stalls, and take the time even through their weeks to ride horses as they've been given so graciously to steward by this university. The Asbury Equine Program has been a monumental factor in how I have been learning, learning what purposeful action can really look like in someone's life. Although I love horses, they will never hold a candle to the joy that God has gifted me and being able to be in a community with others who, although value horses, value people more. And above all, love and honor God in what they do here. Thank you, Sarah and Liz. Y'all are, you're, you're dressed the right way. I wish I had a cowboy hat. Everyone, my name is Kevin Brown. I serve as the 18th president here at Asbury University. Wow, this is an incredible facility on an incredible piece of land, all here in central Kentucky. I really appreciate you being here today. And as an administrator, one of the things that excites me most is when a group of talented people gather together, they cast a vision, and they mobilize to achieve it. And I get to sit back and watch that and marvel and praise the Lord. We have some amazing people. And one of those amazing people you know is Harold Rainwater. And can you just join me in giving him a hand? I don't know where we would be, Harold, without your leadership. That's a very true statement. Harold loves Wilmore. He loves this community. Harold loves Asbury. He loves our mission. He loves our students. Harold loves horses. He knows this industry. He cares about it. And he loves the Lord. That is evident anytime you see him, that Jesus Christ is at the center of his life. This facility and the programs that it will harbor are very much in line with the mission of this institution. At Asbury, we like to say that we are student-centric. And what that means is we prioritize decisions and policies and practices that elevate a student's experience, their maturation, their character development, their preparation for tomorrow's environment, their transformation as a person to be salt and light and to go into different job fields and be a light unto the world. That's our desire. We are a student-centric institution. And I'm thrilled, I'm so proud of the students that you see before you today. The work that they are doing now, the work that they will do to bend the universe in favor of others and to honor and glorify God. That's our mission. I wanna recognize that likely more than any other academic program on our campus, we have local community members, we have volunteers, we have supporters 
who have been a part of this program, and it would not be what it is today without your support. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for how you've partnered with Asbury University. Thank you for how you have loved our students. And we want to be good neighbors. We want to serve this environment. I like to say that you know the value of an institution. If you waved a magic wand and it was gone overnight, would it be missed? And I'm proud to say because of the work of faculty and staff and our students, I think it would. We want to build bridges. We want to serve this environment. We want to serve this community. And we want this facility. We want this program. We want these people to be a conduit for that to occur. Harold and our students, I want to thank you for your creativity. I want to thank you for your entrepreneurship. I want to thank you for your risk-taking. I'm so proud at the fact that our country is safer right now because of our Service Mount program. I'm so proud of the fact that mental health is being addressed right now because of our therapy program. The things that we're doing on this campus are serving the larger world. We want to be salt and we want to be light. I look forward to this arena spurring other ideas and programs and service to our students, to the community, and to the kingdom. And last but not least, I want to give my sincere thanks to those of you in this room who have volunteered, those of you who have donated time, who have donated equipment, who have donated resources, donated hay. I want to thank you for those who have prayed for Asbury. You've prayed for our mission. You've prayed for our students. And for those who have supported Harold, for those who have supported our staff, for those who have supported our faculty. God has blessed us. And we want to honor that blessing. And we want to multiply that blessing. But in all that we do, we want to glorify him. Let your light so shine before others so that they may see your good work and honor and glorify your Father in heaven. Thank you for the good work that's happened in this program and at this school. Students, thank you. May it all be a glory to the Father and may it serve this community. At this time, it's my privilege to introduce our board chair, Larry Brown. No relation. Larry is an extraordinary individual, and my predecessor, Dr. Sandra Gray, blessed me with many, many gifts as I inherited this role, and one of those is our board of trustees and the opportunity to work with our board chair, Larry Brown. He loves this school, he knows its mission, he cares about our students, and he's been an incredible steward of all of these things and a stabilizing, measured presence. I'm so thankful for him. Larry, at this time, is going to lead us in an official prayer of consecration as we officially dedicate the Henry and Elsie Bayless Arena. Well, thank you all, friends, for being here. You are blessing us by your presence, by your prayers, and by your participation in, uh, in this wonderful activity that we have of educating students and on this place. This all started with God faithfully providing men and women who were interested in the equine. And of course, we've heard of Harold's contribution, and it started, it goes way back. He was a younger man in uh, 1978 when he was on staff, and uh, he decided to have a horsemanship class, and it happened in his backyard. Now, I've never been in your backyard, but I don't think it looks exactly like what we're sitting in right now, right, Harold? Well, it's great. Things have grown, and so we, uh, we appreciate your contribution and your ability to take this picturesque farm that we have here on the banks of the Kentucky River. And I've got to believe the Lord had this in mind for this place when he created the earth that we now enjoy. So we are here, and we do enjoy it. And out of this place, though, we want to send students students who have been equipped to become ambassadors for Christ and to the equine industries. Their leadership of the instructors um, and, uh, and the students here and the horses, they've been showcased, as you've heard, nationally and even internationally, as we've heard. More importantly, our students practice mindful stewardship of God's amazing creation the horses, and the land on which we find ourselves. They recognize the horse as a, as a partner in the work and in ministry. Our graduates become professionals of integrity, setting new standards of excellence in this industry. 
this arena. This arena is the next step in the program's growth in excellence and influence. Thanks be to God. So let me read the declaration on this day where we dedicate this facility. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Asbury University, we present the Henry and Elsie Bayless Equine Arena to be consecrated to the glory of God and for the equipping of God's people for a lifetime of learning, leadership, and service to the professions, society, the family, and the church, thereby preparing them to engage their cultures and advance the cause of Christ around the world. On this day, October 27th, 2022, we dedicate the Henry and Elsie Bayless Equine Arena. Would you join me in prayer of dedication? Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you now asking that you would let this place where your presence dwells to be a place that will bring encouragement, excellence, education, and mindful service to the community close and far away. We ask that all those who enter this arena will experience your grace, your love, your protection. Almighty God, use the people and horses that we prepare in this arena to proclaim the good news of the gospel both here and around the world. We ask that you open new avenues of ministry for Asbury University's equine program. And we pray this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Larry. You know, you just did one of these in the summer for the Collaborative Learning Center. Now you did a dedication prayer for the arena. January 9th, we're going to be doing a dedication of our student center. We're getting pretty good at these consecration dedication things. Um, it is great to have you here. Let me add my thanks uh, for your support, for your prayers, for your presence. It is not a small thing to see such a great crowd come out here. My job is to help us transition to actually cutting the ribbon for the building. Then the official ribbon cutting will happen. I'll give some instructions for the transition after that and uh, for a reception. I'll give you that in just a minute. Um, but first, what you've been waiting for, where we give people sharp objects and have them cut something in unison, a skill that everybody has, right? Uh, we are actually going to cut the ribbon. Uh, I'm going to invite each of you up in order to stand beside the ribbon. You'll be given a pair of scissors. Don't cut it when you first get up there. We will be doing some photo ops, and then we will count you down to cut it all together. So let me invite you to come up. Representing students, Ms. Liz Beck, if you can come up right to the end there. Representing academics, Dr. Timothy Worcester. Representing our Board of Trustees, Mr. Larry Brown. Our President, Dr. Kevin Brown. Representing the equine program, Mr. Harold Rainwater. Representing alumni and program supporters, Jeannie McDowell, class of 69. And representing our community and program supporters, Mr. Clay Corman. You can give them a hand right now. The ribbon is officially cut. 